Hello guys, welcome back. I'm back with another video. This one's about Kubernetes. We'll see how we can set up a development Kubernetes cluster using Minikube on Windows. This current computer that you can see is a Windows machine. It's a Windows 7. I have a few prerequisites already checked. I've got a hypervisor, um, which is a virtual box installed on this machine. Uh, like any new technologies I try, let's get started with their website. So this is kubernetes.io. Let's go to documentation and let's find their getting started. So we're going to go to learning environment and then click on Kubernetes. So this will take us through the Kubernetes installation. So let's open that in a new window and we'll get back to these instructions when we finish with installing. So it says before we begin, it's probably going to talk about yeah, install and set up kubectl and uh, Windows, check hypervisor. Yeah, we're not going to use Hyper-V because um, I don't have Hyper-V installed or I don't have it, I don't use it. I like VirtualBox, so we can use that one. And we want to install Minikube. First, we have to install Windows install kubectl. So let's go ahead and do that again in a new window. So it says download the latest one here and it's downloading. So I'll just pause the video and come back to you. Alright so that's all downloaded so let's go ahead and put it in a folder. Let's grab that and Let's put it in uh, K8S. I've created this folder and added this to path. What I mean by that is I've gone into system. System, if I can click right. And advanced settings. And you have environment variables section up here. So you go click on that locate path and you can see in the end there that I've got C colon K8S in the path. So that's something you have to do uh, to, to get this to run from command line. Uh, what I mean by that is if I go to write kubectl, so uh, I'm not in the same path, I'm not in C K8S, but if I type kubectl it should it should be able to run it. Otherwise, if you don't have it on in path, you have to go to cd c colon back, backslash k8s, and you will be able to run it from here. Right. So that's just convenient to be able to run it from anywhere. Um, so I'll just close that. Don't need that anymore. Uh, I'll leave this open because we gotta download other things. Um, so I think we're pretty much good here. So we finished this step and we're going we're going down. So I've got VirtualBox, so this is checked to install Minikube manually on Windows using Windows installer, download the exe. Alright, so this will also download some yep, it is downloading. Um, so I'll let that finish and then get back to you guys. So that's downloaded too, so I'm just gonna bring it up in here. Also cut that and paste it in K8S and probably just installer. Um, maybe run this, see what happens. Alright, so yeah, this is an installer, so that's fine. Uh, I'm going to change that to K8S Minikube, that's fine. Right. And then finish. Alright. So in here it should have minikube.exe. So I'll just bring back the command window and then test this thing here. Minikube 
and that's working too. That's all good. Now, let's close that. See what's up next. Start. We don't need this because we don't have any previous installation. So we're done with this. We're going to go back here. So let's start Minikube. All right. Let me bring up a terminal. Uh, probably not that one. Just the good old command prompt. And let's type minikube start. I'm told that this is a tricky process and it fails a fair bit. So let's see how we go. It's downloading stuff, so I'm just going to pause it. Alright, so that's all done. So it's downloaded the VM and um, set up the environment with a version of uh, Kubernetes, Docker, it downloaded Kubelet and Kubedium, which I was talking about. It downloaded a version of Kubelet and Kubedium. Uh, and then it pulled some Docker images and launched Kubernetes. So now if we look at VirtualBox. There's the VM, it's running, so we should be able to run some commands. So we're going to try this command here kubelet run hello minikube, and then let's image ID on that port, and let's see what the output's going to be. And if I do. Alright. It's telling us that it's deployment.apps hello minikube is created. So that's the output that we can see. Let me just move this to one side. And there it is. That's the output we should see. And that's, that's the output we see. So that's working. Uh, I'm going to just open a port. Alright, so yeah, it says, um, yeah, it's exposed. So if we do a kubectl get pod, there it is, that's a pod running, uh, and it's got the status of container creating. So if I scroll down, yeah, that's what it's talking about, the pod's still being created, so we just give it a moment. And uh, it should go from 0, 1 to 1, 1. Try that again. Yeah, it's still creating. So uh, it's just going to take a moment. I'm just going to pause the video here. So I just ran the command again. And we have 1 of 1 ready, That's which is good. Um, and now we can try to get the URL. There we go. That's the command for that. Service. Hello Minikube. There we go. Service Hello Minikube URL, and that's the URL it is available on. So I just grab that and open it in the browser. And there we go. That's the host name Hello Minikube, and that's the uh, you know Docker style identifier. And it's telling us the versions, um, like a server version, Nginx. So if we compare this with what we were supposed to get, it's pretty much what we were supposed to get. Request body, no body in request. So there it is. Right? So now, um, yeah, we can just follow along with this and see if we can uh, delete the deployment. This is how you can set up a simple development cluster and run your own Docker images in a Kubernetes cluster. All right, so let's try some of these commands here. I'm going to do kubectl, and I'm going to delete this service. Um, hello, minikube. And there it's gone. I'm also going to kubectl. Uh, delete 
deployment. Hello, mini cube. So deployment extensions. Hello, mini cube deleted. That's all. So if you want to stop mini cube, we do mini cube stop. And this is going to stop our VM. If you look at this, starving the VM. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, you could also do mini cube delete. Um, I'm just going to keep the cl um, I'm j or I'm just going to delete the cluster. So mini cube delete will delete the virtual machine. So the VM is no longer is no longer there. Um, that's it. Uh, there's other stuff you could do, like managing the cluster, like starting up, and you could change the VM drivers to Hyper-V or any other VM driver, KDM if you're using Linux or whatever. Um, and yeah, let's see, all these versions of uh, all these hypervisors are supported at the moment. And uh, yeah, there's some advanced commands you want to try. You could just copy the commands and uh, Minikube start has some parameters that you can pass at the time of uh, cluster creation and uh, for example if you want to run your cluster on a separate port or um, if you want to add a plugin CNI plugin for network um, yeah you could you could find them in Minikube help and then you should be able to find all these commands so I will conclude this video here uh, please uh, like and subscribe if you want more videos please leave your comments and it's good to see you guys I'll talk to you again soon good day